we are building an army. And Hezekiah said to the, the people of God who had turned the temple into a trash bin, who the very gates of God's house were, were absolutely trashed. In modern terms, Israel had lost its identity, just like America has. And according to the word of God, Hezekiah had nothing to go on but his own boldness. First thing he did is he got the Levitical priests together and he said, you're backslidden. I want you to get right with God. I want you to go, I want you to fast and pray and repent and cleanse yourself. Because I believe that if you do not, God is going to judge Israel because of you, the priesthood. I'm telling the modern minister today, it is time to stop being afraid of government and stand up for the truth of the Bible in the United States. God, are you ready? God is cleansing the American preacher. Every man, every woman behind a pulpit, God is cleansing them. It's time to put away the games, the trinkets, the toys, and the excuses and to get clean before God. Am I right? Second Chronicles 29 verse 30, Mordecai, moreover, excuse me, moreover King Hezekiah and his leaders commanded the Levites to sing praise to the Lord. And they brought back the Psalms of David that had long been neglected and left for decades. I believe we need to bring back the old hymns. I do. It's just something on them. All right. So they sang praises with gladness. I watched you while you were singing this wonderful song, I Speak Jesus. Some of you lost your composure. And there were someone sitting next to you saying inside, I've been praying for this for years. Now, the Bible says they sang the praises of gladness. They bowed their heads and worshiped. And in verse 31, then Hezekiah answered and said, Now that you have consecrated yourselves to the Lord, come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings to the house of the Lord so that the assembly brought it in such mass such a sudden surge of giving occurred that they literally had to stop the people. What I'm telling you is, I'm going to say it as a man of God. This preacher up here is not like the other ones you see on TV. This guy right here, I don't fit with them. They're, they're walking behind me going, what is wrong with that man? The problem is, I saw Miss Kuhlman. The problem is... I was personally rebuked several times by David Wilkerson. So David and Catherine are the DNA of my life. And I don't play this game. I'm not worried about popularity. I don't need the trinkets and the toys of ministry. Somebody said you need to claim big things from God. Well, listen, save your claimer for a second. Claim prostitutes to be saved. Claim gangs to turn to God. Claim wheelchairs to be empty. Claim drug abuse to be solved. And the miracle of God to hit the laws. So I want you to help me build an army. I'm making a very public announcement right now. We are buying, we bought a tent, we built it. It's almost done. You see this tent? It's, a, it's about just under 20,000 square feet. We just bought one that is almost 40,000 square feet. So we're going to have, we can seat comfortably 2,500 people in this tent. In the new one, it is 5,120 people. And you know what? We're going to fill it in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. We're going to fill it. 
By a miracle, Jim Willoughby, who has just come on board as my executive director, went to L.A. and did the impossible. Some I've prayed for five years. I've sought God for one thing. You know, the Bible said that Paul wanted to go to Rome. I had one city in my crosshairs, one. And it was one location, and there's no way we could have gotten it. It was too woke, broke, and much of a joke for them to ever imagine us renting there. But we have obtained on September 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th, the Los Angeles Fairgrounds. Come on, somebody. And we, we are going to put our 5,000 seat tent in the LA Fairgrounds and conduct one of the largest mass invasions of the streets of LA. And I want you to come. In Africa, there was a problem in an animal reserve where the elephants started killing the rhinoceroses, which were their neighbors, and they never had any problem. And they couldn't figure it out. Why are the elephants suddenly killing the rhinoceroses? So they did an investigation, and some harebrained naturalist said, let's take all of the older male elephants move them out of the herd and put them in another reserve. And as soon as they did, the young elephants went crazy. So then they said, we better bring them back. So they brought the old male elephants back to the herd. And on day one, they started beating the tar out of the young elephant. How many of you see a parable right here? And if if your grandkids, you, how many of you know your grandkids need you right now, Grandma? I'm going to go over here a second. Grandma, your grandchildren need you right now. So I want you to get ready right now. Say, I'm not old. And wiggle your joints around right now. All that limbago, arthritis, all that noise. Say it out loud with me right now. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles in Jesus' name. I was up at the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry when a kid walked up to me. I had a clipboard in my hand. And he says, man of God, give me your mantle. I hit him in the head with the clipboard. I said, go get your own mantle. I'm not half done with this one yet. How many of you here are not half done yet? Come on.